this movement is spreading like wildfire on campuses across the country, and we're all going to get burned unless we speak out now. So they come up with this pathetic idea of invest two bucks, two dollars for two states. Is there anyone in this room? Who will give me two dollars for two states? No. Come on, I'm gonna auction Never. off the two state solution. <laughs> two dollars. Dollar fifty. I, I see a dollar up there. All right. But they say uh, this is serious. They say, join our invest, don't divest campaign to raise money for two organizations. Landforpeace.org, a Palestinian microfinance organization set up by students like us. And the Center for Jewish Arab Economic Development, which promotes Jewish Arab economic cooperation in Israel. It's important to know that these sorts of joint projects, uh, most likely, I haven't looked at these specific ones, but projects which are designed to give the impression of equality and reciprocity and that don't uh, challenge the reality of injustice violate the uh, Palestinian call for boycott, divestment, and sanctions. So uh, it's really important to understand that, that they will push these things on your campuses in order to try to divert attention and to make people uh, 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 push their energy in a direction where it will have no impact whatsoever. Because these sorts of feel-good joint projects which are designed to legitimize Israel by saying, oh, you know, let's all just get along, uh, have been uh, tried for years and years, and, and they made no difference. And there is uh, a great uh, uh, sense that uh, after trying to ignore the BDS movement for many years, uh, it is starting to uh, really get the notice of Israel. There was an article in the uh, Financial Times yesterday called uh, the headline, Israel Shrugs Off Economic Boycott Activism. Now, the article, you can go uh, read it. I won't read from it. But you know, there's a lot of bravado in that they're saying, well, you know, it really hasn't made that much impact, and we can weather it. But the fact is, it's in the Financial Times. They're starting to take notice. Today, there is an article in, uh, in, on Ynet, which is the, the website of uh, the Israeli newspaper, Yediyat Ahronot, which is the most widely read website in Israel. It's in Hebrew. You're gonna, I'm going to test my Hebrew now. The headline is, is Haremot Neged Israel, Haim Hem Matzlichim Lehazik. That means, who wants to give us a translation of that? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> it was good, it was good. Okay. And uh, the translation, uh, my rough translation, but Matan can correct me, is boycotts against Israel, uh, are they uh, succeeding in, in hurting? And uh, it, uh, it, this is just today. And it's almost not a day goes by you don't see a new article in the Israeli press about uh, BDS. And again, there's a lot of bravado where they say, well, you know, it's, there's a lot of bluster, but it's not really affecting us yet. But it is affecting them. They are noticing, and they're starting to get worried about it. So if you ever think, if you're ever told, oh, this will never work, just read the Israeli press. And it is starting. It is starting to have the effect that we want of forcing Israelis to do what they don't want to do, which is some introspection, some uh, real rethinking uh, of the situation and how to get out of it. Now, I want to close, so we have a, a bit of time for uh, a Q&A, with uh, some observations about what comes next. I think that um, uh, I've argued, and I, I don't think it's a tough case to make in this room, that BDS is essential. BDS is a tool to level the playing field, to provide solidarity and strength to Palestinians 
who are resisting and standing steadfast wherever they are, whether in Palestine, uh, in Israel, or in the refugee camps here in the United States, everywhere where Palestinians are. It's a way to say, you know, uh, many people say, you know, the Palestinians are among the most lectured people on earth. And they're always told, that if you're a US Secretary of State, the Palestinians must do more to, and then there's a whole list of things. <laughs> and then even from some of the people who, who are friends of the Palestinians, they say, you know, if only the Palestinians could be more like Gandhi. <laughs> you know, all the time. I never say to the Israelis, if only the Israelis could be more like Gandhi. Can you imagine Israeli settlers behaving like Gandhi? <laughs> there wouldn't be any settlements, that's for sure. Well, uh, I think those sorts of words are cheap. To tell people who are uh, fighting for their very existence uh, not to resist, not to use violence, uh, is uh, from, from the safety of uh, Canada or the U.S. is a bit rich. But that doesn't mean... But that doesn't mean we should abandon a belief in nonviolence or that we should advocate violence. I'm certainly not saying we should advocate violence. What I'm saying is that if you're against violence, then provide an alternative. And the alternative is BDS, as uh, Fayyad said this morning. What, 